This is my YouTube channel where I chat about things that I have been making here in Sacramento, California. It's basi basically crafty show and tell. Thanks so much for sticking around if you've watched my videos before. Um, I'm a little nervous getting back on here because it's been a bit since I've recorded one of these. So let's start off by checking in. Uh, how are you doing? I really want to know. Um, leave a comment down below letting me know how how are you doing today. Uh, I'm gonna get serious here for just a second. Uh, I promise this won't be the whole video, but I took a little bit of a break because I've been having a rough 2020. If you've been around here for a bit, you'll know that I've had the honor of being very close with my grandma and had the opportunity to be very present for her dying and she died this February. Um, and so I've been deep in the grieving process of that. And then in March, did you know that we had a pandemic? That we're in a global pandemic? Yeah. Um, so 2020 is really a blur. Um, I am someone who has struggled with my mental health previously and dealing with depression and OCD in 2020 is a wild ride. I have attempted to sit down and record a few of these in the time since I've last seen you and watching them back uh, like my heart just wasn't quite in it it wasn't something that yeah my heart wasn't in it now I am all for sharing the highs and the lows social media is weird right we often only share the Instagram worthy shots you know share the best the best of. And so I am a big proponent of sharing the good and the bad, but I just needed some time to be alone. But I'm really excited to connect and share with crafty people again. Um, this has been inspired in part by someone in my knitting group reaching out and organizing a virtual Zoom knit cult group again, and it was really, really great to connect with crafty people again. So, hey, I'm back, and just know that if you're going through it, you're not alone. My crafting has not slowed down at all. It has taken some slightly different forms. I've been sewing a whole lot and doing a tremendous amount of dyeing. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I kind of slyly dropped some yarn for sale a few weeks back. Um, I was very nervous doing so, but it all sold out, which is tremendously exciting. I've been dyeing more yarn, and I'll have another shop update coming up uh, September 12th. So more on that at the end of the episode towards the end of this video. Uh, I've also been knitting. I've been knitting quite a bit. I've been knitting less than I have in the past and I guess I've just come to realize that my idea of knitting less to the average person would be knitting a whole heck of a lot. So don't worry, there's there's still knitting that I'm going to be sharing with you. Whew, okay. Hopefully I decide to still share this after sharing all of that with you. Um, Let's start off with what I'm wearing. I am wearing another Wixton shift. Um, this is a pattern by Wixton. Pattern Company, I think is what it's called. And it's a simple shift dress. I'll stand up and walk behind the bed here real quick. You might notice that I have a different filming setup. We are still in self-isolation here in Sacramento. And 
Here in Sacramento, we are lucky enough to not have been um, impacted by the wildfires, but the air is hazardous outside. So we are stuck indoors. Um, so my partner's out in the other room working and I'm in here talking quietly, hoping my neighbors don't hear me. It's a whole new setup, but let me walk over here and show off my dress. So I love everything about this dress. It's got pockets. Um, I originally sewed one of these. It's a really great beginner pattern. I sewed one with the aid of Chelsea from Friday Pattern Company and Sew Shop Sacramento. She had a um, workshop where you sewed one of these in a day. I still wear that dress like all the time, at least once a week now in quarantine like kind of maybe every day uh i wouldn't recommend sewing this all in one day it was a very long very tiring day but it was one of my first times sewing a a garment at all so maybe with more experience it's easier to sew it in one day i sewed this over a weekend the fabric that i sewed it out of um it's a cotton polyester blend that I picked up at High Fashion Fabric, the best fabric store in Sacramento. And it was originally sort of a pink and white gingham with little bits of burgundy throughout. And it gave me a little too, um, like little house on the prairie vibes. Let's go in more for an interesting all over geometric print. So I had some black writ dye and I diluted it and dyed it just using that, that black writ dye and it came out this lovely shade of purple and cream and brown and I really like it. If I find a little bit of the fabric before I dyed it, I'll insert a picture so you can compare the two. A part of why I bought this fabric was because it was... Um, highly discounted at the fabric store and I liked the feel and drape of it and I knew that it would probably look really cool if I dyed it and it turned out that I do. I think I'm going to continue to do that with fabrics where I like the fabric content itself and maybe it has an interesting print but maybe the colors just aren't quite right. I'll, um, and I, I bought it because I thought this would be a great wearable muslin. I sized this down from the previous shift that I made and I wanted to make sure it was still gonna fit me well. And it does. And I dyed it. And I love it. So, highly recommend that. If you care about your stitches matching your eventual garment if you're gonna dye it, don't do what I did. And I mostly use a like cotton blend when I sew, even though I know that the standard in the sewing community seems to be polyester. Um, it's not going to dye if you use um, a dye for natural materials. So bear that in mind, um, and if you do uh, have like a more polyester blend or know that you're going to be dyeing something that has polyester, just be sure that you use a dye that um, can dye synthetic materials. Okay, what do I want to share with you first? I've made many things since we've last talked, so I'm not going to be sharing everything. I think I'll be bringing in a segment called, uh, what does Andrew call it? FFO's Former Finished Objects. But let's pick up where I think we left off when we last talked. So I love this top. Smelling it now, it smells fine. It, I took it out of the hand washing bin, so maybe I could have worn it. This is my reed sweater. Um, it's made out of Tina Tape by Wool in the Gang, which is a plant-based fiber. It's like roughly Aran worsted weight. And I would compare this, I actually have some of it right here, to Kestrel in many ways. Kestrel is 100% linen, Aran worsted weight yarn from Quince and Company. I'm using this for another project. I'll talk about it in just a second. We're getting ahead of ourselves. 
So when I was sharing this last time, I think I didn't give it a lot of love, right? I, um, it was wet because I was blocking it and the way this yarn behaved was very unexpected to how I thought it was going to behave. I thought it would be more like the linen, um, since when it's dry it has a lot of the same drape and properties to it. Like it's one of those materials that when you wear it on a hot day, it's going to make you feel cooler than if you are just have bare skin and the sun is hitting and absorbing into your skin, right? It's a very cool fabric. So when this gets wet, it stiffens up and it shrinks. And I freaked out because I don't remember my swatch doing that, it must have. And then it took a really long time to dry. Like, even putting this out in the Sacramento sun, I think at that point it was in the 90s. Oh, the 90s, to have it be in the 90s again. Oh, we've been having crazy heat waves in the hundreds recently. Um, it did not dry for like a whole week. But once it dried, it stretched out again as it dried. So something about getting it wet, the fibers must um, contract. I'm very intrigued by this, and if you know anything about, I think it's called Lyocell. Um, if you have any resources about that type of fiber, hit me up, let me know. I'm fascinated by it. I'm sorry for any mean thing I ever said about you, Tina Tape. You're super cool and have wonderful drape super wearable, wearable garment. Um, the reed sweater, it's interesting, it's crafted after the Dolenti, which is like a Quinson Company classic pattern knit using their fingering weight linen yarn, uh, Sparrow. You knit essentially uh, this panel, and then you pick up and knit this panel, and then you do the same thing for the back, sew them together, and stitch up the top. I closed up the neckline a little bit further than the pattern recommended, probably about half an inch on either side. I may extend it again. I thought I wanted a little bit more snuggly around the neck, but I love the look, the open look and drape of a real pronounced boat neck more than this. I wear this all the time. These types of more drapey, thick, cool yarn tops, they're just like a hug for the summer, right? They're very comforting. I love throwing them on over a dress when I want to wear something cute, but I don't want to be too hot. Do you have any questions about this project? I feel like I'm out of practice and I might be forgetting some things. Leave them down below. Got gauge. Used the right needle size, I think. And I knit the smallest size. Wear, talking about wearing things over dresses. I have <laughs> a sewing project to show you. And it is inside out, but it's kind of perfect because I can show off some of the modifications I need to it. This is a hacked... Ogden cami that I turned into a dress. Uh, the fabric again is a woven cotton rayon blend, I believe. Got it from High Fashion Fabric, highly discounted. But this fabric is quite see through, it's quite transparent. Um, so, what I did was this fabric has a facing that you put in at the top. Rather than finishing the top with a facing, I just sewed two dresses and put one inside of the other. So let me turn it the right way. There's like two dresses in here. Normally there would be a facing here, but instead I sewed the two necklines together and now there's just a dress in a dress. It's a really light, airy, breezy dress. I like the spaghetti straps. Is there another word for these or do we just refer to them as spaghetti straps? I don't know. 
I had to modify the pattern because of not doing the facing and I couldn't figure out a way to add the straps in a neater fashion. So it's messy. I should go back and clean this up or maybe add a button there that could look cute. But yeah, I just wanted to show off the imperfections of my sewing. Because maybe you want to give sewing a go. You've been a knitter historically. When I wear this, no one notices those messy straps on there. It's only when I point them out. You can make it work, and if you notice something, no one else probably notices it. Things that I want to change about this, I didn't put pockets in this dress. I don't know what I was thinking. It's 2020. All of my garments need pockets. Um, I prefer inserted pockets. Is that what they're called when you put your hands in the garment? The terms I don't know. Uh, but I might make patch pockets like this dress has. Let me... That was awkward. See? A little outside patch pocket. That'd be easy to add to this dress and I could maybe put the stripes facing the other way. I just think that with all the stripes it is already verging on circus vibes. And there's nothing wrong with circus vibes, but it's not what I'm going for with the dress. So still undecided, but it's 2020. Everything needs goddamn pockets. I have two works in progress that I want to talk to you about, and they're both knitting. Um, speaking of Kestrel, and drapey summer tops that feel like a cool hug. I'm making a top using Kestrel. This is 100% linen yarn by Quince and Company and I'm knitting it in the Lyra color and this is the Ranunculus. Ranunculus by um, forgetting the designer's name, but I'll be sure to include the information on it. I've made some modifications to this pattern. So um, it's designed to be an incredibly oversized sweater um, and a very open gauge. And that's not really what I like out of my garments. I don't think I have really anything that I've knit that's a really open gauge. Uh, it has you using like a US 10. For most of this, I went down to a US 8 up here, and I think I have two to three additional stitches per inch. So the sizing is very different. It is like a, it's snug along the yoke of this lace pattern. Um, and then throughout the body, I actually went down to a size 7 needle because I didn't want the top to be transparent when I was wearing it over sweaters, right? Or even if I wasn't wearing it over sweaters, wearing it over dresses. Or like maybe I can even wear this on its own with a skirt. I really don't like wearing bras. I want to try and get away with it. Probably can't with this top, but um, we'll see. We'll see. I've made other things that I can get away with. Or at least maybe I think I can get away with it. Maybe everyone else is getting a show. Who knows? Modifications I've made. I lengthened it a little bit. And, oh no. I shortened it a little bit. But lengthened the twisted rib at the bottom. It has you do just a normal bind off. But that looked way too harsh at the bottom of the sweater. So I took the time and I actually did a tubular bind off. I don't love the look of a tubular bind off for everything, but um, it's essentially, if you haven't done it before, it's like a Kitchener stitch for your sweater. I really like the look of it here, and I think I'm going to do it on the sleeves as well. One thing I don't love, because this is knit in the round, and um, I think it's because of the construction of this yarn with the twisted rib 
it all kind of slants and leans. So I know I could have avoided that by seaming the garment, but it doesn't bother me too much. I am already on the Curse you battery? My battery died. Okay, where were we? Sleeves, I'm on them. No sleeve island. I'm gonna go super fast because I'm just going back to where um, I slipped yarn onto waist yarn and adding a twisted rib. I can't remember if these are modifications from the original pattern, but um, I've already, I want to show you how I do my tubular bind off, I've already slipped uh, my stitches onto two needles. So you can do a tubular bind off on just one needle, but I find it really hard to remember where I'm supposed to be kitchenering, so I just find it much easier to slip all of the knit stitches on one needle and all of the purl stitches on another, and use needles with different colors to help me um, help make it even easier. So mark my words, I will have this blocked and ready to wear the next time we check in. Have you made a ranunculus sweater? One thing I want to say about it, um, the pictures I've seen of it, I've seen on lots of different bodies, um, but I didn't check to see if this was at all a size inclusive pattern, and it is not. It is a one size pattern, of which there's no such thing. Um, so that sucks, and I don't like giving essentially free advertising to sweaters that aren't inclusive. So the, uh, the pattern does include some options for different sizes of bust, but since this is a pattern that's designed for like so much positive ease, it would just be really great to have multiple sizes. Um, I feel like I'd understand a little bit more if it weren't a paid for pattern, but this is a pattern that you buy. So come out with some more sizes for the ranunculus, right? Because I, I, want, I want all my friends to be able to make it. I have another work in progress. I am making a pair of vanilla socks. And this is using some of my latest hand dyed yarn. I'm really excited about these. So much that um, I finished dyeing this batch of yarn um, and washing it like two days ago and it still wasn't entirely dry and I was like, oh, I gotta cast this on, I have to see how it knits up. So I dyed this using some walnut that I fermented, um, some matter root, and do, 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 some oak gall as a mordant. Um, and I used a resist dye technique that creates these little specks, these little lines. Um, if you're knitting something that is larger, um, you might get some cool like polka dot techniques or like a polka dot effect as well. I absolutely love this color. Um, I dyed this on a fingering weight yarn. It's 100% BFL. It was my first time dyeing on this base and I really like it. So that's very exciting. Um, my vanilla sock recipe, I tend to use a size zero US needle and cast on 60 stitches and I do a two by two rib. And I pretty much just do the two by two rib until I get tired of it. Ideally this length, like an inch and a half, but my favorite socks have two by two rib going down the whole foot. If I ever had that patience and stamina with my wrist, I would do that. But yeah, I generally just knit the cuff as long as I can stand it. 
because while I don't enjoy the fit of just a vanilla stockinette sock all that much, I really like knitting them. So, so much of knitting and making is kind of that balance, right, between things that you like to make and things that you want to use and get the most use out of. Let me show you what this yarn looks like in the skein. So, hmm, the color's a little bit blown out because I'm right by a window. And because I'm right by a window, I also have some neighbors that are occasionally walking by, so that's kind of fun and awkward. Yeah, you can see the brown and silver from the walnut, the sort of mauve red color from the matter. Um, oh, and it yeah, looks like I have one that's not wrapped up in the skein. So here you can see the resist technique on the skein that I used. Really, really fun. So I've been dyeing a lot. Dyeing is something that, um, ugh, when I'm just at the worst, it feels really healing feels really, really healing. So it's cool to be able to share with people um, something that I'm proud of and something that is just a part of a part of my healing process. Healing of 2020. This is another recent dye. It's coming out so blown out, so I'll hold it back here. This is also dyed with walnut and matter root. It is dip dyed. This side you see the silvery walnut that I fermented. Ooh, sweaty there. It's hot. And this is dip dyed in the matter root. And so, yeah, you get this really cool, like, you can get a striping or different pooling effects depending on what gauge you knit and what you make out of it. This I dyed on. I love this soft plump yarn. It is a 100% non-superwash, um, ecologically harvested and milled merino wool. I think I'm gonna call this one Blood Moon, because it looks like a blood moon. I have two other yarns to show you that I'm a big fan of. Um, so the first yarn, to sell out when I posted my little shop update before was definitely the marigold yarn. It is a bright yellow yarn and it's incredible that you can get this color with flowers. Um, this is, it's really blowing out, this is very frustrating. This is marigolds on 100% uh, BFL superwash fingering wool. BFL stands for um, Blue Face Luster. Luster. I always have a hard time pronouncing that. Um, it's a very sturdy yarn, so it's really great for socks, but you can use it for for anything. So I dyed it again. I added a little bit of onion skins because I wanted to give it more of a golden undertone to it. So I'll have some of these in the shop, and I'll also have these in... Um, the non-superwash merino base. Let's see if this shows up at all. Oh, it's not going to show up very well, but I have like the prettiest pearl pink. Hmm. It's just like matching my skin tone too much. Um, this is dyed with matter and it just glows. You can kind of see it. There'll definitely be photos up in the shop as well. So that's just like a little fraction of the things that I've been making recently. Um, it feels really great to be sitting down and talking to you again. I'm definitely going to upload this to YouTube. Um, and I want to know, what, what are you making? What are you up to? Um, 
are you knitting or sewing or spinning something while you watch this? Are you excited to make something? Um, yeah. I'm excited to connect with you guys again. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. I'll include places you can find me elsewhere on the internet down below, um, as well as a link to my shop. I lied, I didn't totally sell out. I have like one skein that's still listed on my shop. It's like a logwood, uh, logwood dyed yarn. So you can check that out too. There is something in the shop still listed as well. Alright, we'll talk with you again soon. Take care. Bye.